How many of you guys out there concealed carry with 42 total rounds? Sunday gun day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we're taking a look at a gun that a couple of you out there have requested and it's coming from a manufacturer that I've never really covered on this channel before. The gun in question is the FN 509 Tactical. The FN 509 Tactical is an extension of the 509 family based on their pistol that the US Army had tested during its modular handgun trials. There are some significant improvements to the design that were implemented in the FN 509 starting on top with FN's low profile optics mounting system. The slide comes standard ready to accept more than 10 commercially available MDR optics that will co-witness with the suppressor height night sights with no milling required. The slide cap for use when not shooting with an optic has raised and serrated sight wings that protect the rear iron sight alignment. This will definitely come in handy for any one-handed manipulation, allowing the shooter to rack the slide off a belt, boot, or table without damaging the sights. The 4.5 inch barrel is of course threaded to accept the bulk of 9mm suppressors available, and the thread cap comes with an o-ring to prevent loosening during use. There are slide serrations both front and rear, thank you FN, and the FDE polymer frame has a unique combo of textures as well as replaceable back straps, leaving this thing feeling pretty damn solid in my hand. All of the controls are ambidextrous and the gun comes standard with a 17 round mag and two 24 round magazines, giving you a ton of capacity for whatever threats life throws your way. So this gun has never really been on my radar to purchase for myself. It is fairly new and QVO actually just picked this up, who I'm borrowing it from, and they are now making holsters for this, including, but not limited to, the Wingman. So this is a Wingman with the primary piece being a tan carbon fiber and then the rear or secondary color just being black. I am running this thing today with the 24 round mag in the side here. So this thing, as you can imagine, does have a little bit of weight to it, but nice clips on here and everything holds this securely as long as you have a decent belt. So after I picked this thing up in their shot, I've just been kind of playing with it for the last day or so, manipulating the slide and everything. It feels really good in my hand and I'm actually really excited to shoot this thing. So let me load up first the 17 round mag and we'll head out here and then I'll come back for my first mag impression. <laughs> Ambidextrous mag release. All right guys, first mag impression with the FN 509. Might as well start off with the beginning there. I'm not a big fan of this Ambi mag release because as you saw there, the way I gripped the gun, I accidentally dropped the mag, especially when it's full. It's got a lot of weight pulling down on it and just the way my finger comes around there, kind of gets caught up on there. I'll probably be able to just kind of adjust my grip accordingly, but not a huge fan of that. Also not a big deal either. My first thoughts of this gun is that it already feels very good in my hand, like I said, and it shot pretty damn flat as well just because of how good of a purchase I can get on here. Now I guess I'll start from the top down with the sights. These are suppressor height sights, obviously. Threaded barrel, you could put any kind of suppressor on here. It is pretty bright out here in the desert, especially at golden hour as the sun is coming down, hitting the back of these sights, which is typically very harsh, but they are serrated on the bottom, on both the front post and the rear. There's two little tritium vials in the back as night sights and a tritium vial in the front post, which is surrounded by a white dot. Coming standard with night sights like that I think is very important, especially when you're paying for the tactical version of this gun. There's really no complaints there, I really don't think that I would change those out if I did own this gun. These sight wings on the outside of the rear sight to protect it, I thought at first were going to be a little bit intrusive, but I really don't notice them that much, and if anything it might help you align the sights more. If you can't see daylight through each side of that wing, then your sights are way off and you really have to get a different purchase on the gun to get that nice sight picture. It is also pretty cool that that is attached to the point where you are going to be mounting up optics. I'm not going to be doing that today, but you should be able to mount anything like an RMR, a Vortex Venom, 
So pretty much any MDR or miniature red dot sight should fit on here. If it were me picking the optic, I would probably go with an FDE RMR just because I like the ruggedness and then it kind of fits with the whole scheme of the gun. Front serrations are nice, I talk about that all the time. I think overall the gun looks very, very good. A lot of times when you see guns like this, which have very intricate designs, there's slide cuts everywhere and a bunch of different texturings. The gun that comes to mind is something around like the XD line. That thing, in my opinion, is just way over the top, almost like a 16 year old designed it. Sorry if that offends anyone out there, I'm really just not a big fan of those guns. I think this was done tastefully though. There are one, two, three, four different textures on the frame of this gun. You have this sort of rectangle pattern in the back, a waffle pattern on the side, very similar in the front and then up on the side here where your thumb and trigger finger are going to be running. You have a much less aggressive yet still functional texturing on there. And like I keep saying, it does feel really good in my hand. I do like the ambi controls for the slide stop lever. I can get to that and drop it even with an empty mag in there. No problem at all. There is of course a rail up front. You could put any light or laser on there. And another big thing which I haven't even used yet is this 24 round mag, actually two of these that the gun comes with. That is a huge plus in my opinion, especially if you are used to a Penix carry and you can deal with carrying this thing in a wingman style holster like this. This gun gives you a ton of capacity and maybe that is the thing that you're looking for. So I'm kind of burning daylight here. I want to get out here and put at least 100 rounds through this gun. That way I can give you guys a better impression of the thing. So let's stop wasting time and get back to shooting. Help me with the mag dump. Mag dump! <laughs> I finish faster than you. This thing never ends, man. That's what she said <laughs> to all of those. <laughs> All right guys, back for my final thoughts on the FN 509 before we run out of daylight, which might be pretty damn soon. Let's talk about the trigger. You guys saw the first couple of rounds out of this gun. It has not been shot before this video and right out of the box, the trigger was not the best, just dry firing it around the house. The take up was a little bit gritty and maybe spongy at first, but actually just after about maybe 200 rounds now, it's already smoothing out. So I think the more that you shoot this thing, the better it will get. I believe Apex is now making triggers for these, but as of right now, I would not replace it. I would just kind of keep shooting the thing until it gets properly broken in, and then I think it will be just fine. 
Like I said, the take up is a little bit gritty and spongy, but you can find the wall pretty damn easily. Another thing is the brake. Once you are at the wall, it's probably like a five and a half to six and a half pound brake. So it's definitely pretty heavy, but at the same time, it's pretty crisp and clean. You let it out and feel the grittiness just a little bit again, right to the reset. And then you're right on top of the wall for another break. And one thing that I do like about this break is where it is actually at. There are some other guns out there that compete pretty directly with this and they break very far back in the trigger guard. I really like where this one breaks, it's comfortable. The articulating trigger safety, that's one thing that I typically don't like, especially like on the Smith & Wesson triggers, but this one doesn't seem to bother me. It's not a flat face trigger, it is smooth, it feels good on my finger. And like I said, I probably wouldn't change anything on this, I would just kind of let it break in and then get used to it how it is. The suppressor height sights, I'm really not used to shooting guns with suppressor height sights like this, but after I got used to them, no problem at all. I did struggle shooting out at a little bit of a distance there, but that was really just me. I've been shooting out here all day. The capacity of this thing is really nice in my opinion, 17 in one rounds, 18. And then the 24 rounder, they give you two of these with the package. I think it makes the gun look cool, but also at the same time, if you're carrying this thing in a wingman holster, that is a ton of capacity. Like I said, you just have to get used to carrying a mag this big because if you're sitting down, bending around and stuff, that might get a little bit annoying to someone who isn't used to a Penix carry. Another thing to hit on in the beginning when I was talking about the magazine release, that was really just the way I was gripping the gun right from the start. I really didn't have an issue with it after that and I didn't even think about moving my trigger finger so I didn't actually do that. The mag release is really positive, metal magazines again so they slide out. And even holding it lefty, which I am not, it's still pretty positive. Is there anything you want to say? When it comes to FN, I haven't really ran a lot of their uh, handgun line. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the SCAR, but on the rifle platform. I think for me, being like a 90s kid, it makes me think of how cool the H&K USP 45 was when I saw it in Counter-Strike. I bought a USP just for that reason. I played a lot of Counter-Strike and... So this to me like makes me think of like the modern day H&K USP 45 tactical. One of the things is like it looks really cool, but at the same time it's super functional. Like it feels like a very solid gun, especially shooting it. The recoil impulse on this is really not bad at all. It, it's a big gun in my opinion, but at the same time it's a pretty flat shooter. And I think Roger thought the same right away. Yeah, it's well balanced. Um, ergonomics are good. I mean, I think kind of like we were talking about the SIG P365, I think a lot of manufacturers are going the way of like um, buy once, cry once. Like get everything you want in a gun. Mounting systems for optics, checkered strapping, or really aggressive texturing. That way you don't have to get it stippled. Large capacity magazines, ambi everything. I think that's kind of the way a lot of manufacturers are going. And I think this fits that application really well. Like Roger said, I mean, you don't have to do anything. You don't need to mill for an optic. You don't need to put slide serrations on it. It already has very functional front slide serrations, threaded barrels, suppressor height sights, co-witness with whatever optic that you put on here. One thing that you might change is the trigger with that apex that they just came out with, but at the same time, I would rather break this thing in and then get a really good feel for how this thing is after maybe 1,000, 1,500 rounds. I think this is a very well executed gun, so good job, FN. Would I buy this gun? I probably would buy it. I don't need to buy one, but uh, would I carry it? Maybe I would probably opt for just the regular 509 version. I don't really need a threaded barrel and suppressor height sights and all that jazz, but I think it seems pretty functional. It seems like it was reliable and would continue to be so. So thank you to Roger for letting me borrow this gun and supplying the ammo for this Sunday gun day. If you guys want to get a holster, if you guys want to get a wingman like this, dude, I <laughs> it sounds so dumb and I'm probably a little biased, but I almost want to buy the gun just to keep this holster because the FDE, with the carbon fiber and everything. I think this thing looks sick. So if you guys want you to- should auction it on your, um, your YouTube lives. Okay, I guess I will be doing a YouTube live just after this video goes live. It's 9 a.m. in the morning if you guys are watching this and are part of the notification squad. So let's say, let's do 8 p.m. Eastern time. I will be here on YouTube and uh, yeah, you guys can come back, check out the auction. We'll talk, answer questions, whatever you guys want to know about making holsters or Maybe I'll even give some secrets on some of the upcoming stuff. And Roger just gave me the okay to auction this thing off. So if you already have a 509 and you're watching this video, that will be a good chance to get your hands on one of these things. So now that's really gonna be all for today. If you guys have any questions on the 509, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. That's all, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.